World War II pushed piston engine aircraft to their absolute limit, with engineers all around the world coming up with ingenious solutions to make them better in every conceivable way. By the end of the war, though, piston planes ran into a wall they couldn't break through. At that point, laws of physics prevented them from being optimized any further. In order to get better results, you needed aircraft of a completely new type. That's right. Today, we're talking about the ways you can get the most out of the first ever operational jets of the Messerschmitt 262 fit. The first aircraft of the series was the ME-262A1A Schwalbe, meaning swallow in German. In War Thunder, just as in real life, it mostly fights late piston aircraft, but it can sometimes encounter early jets of other countries as well. When it comes to fighting the former, the Swallow has a sizable advantage in speed. If you have some altitude to play with, you can easily escape from unfavorable matches. This won't work against other jets, but then the Schwalbe is more nimble than most, so there's a chance to outturn them. Just remember that it won't be easy to hit a fast-moving target in a turn fight. The general idea, though, is to climb somewhere away from the action and then launch a deadly surprise attack from above. Due to the Schwalbe's superior speed, there aren't many aircraft that can counter that. By the end of the war, Germany was in dire need of interceptors, and naturally most of the aircraft of the series were developed and modified to satisfy this specific need. The first version of the Schwalbe, the A1A U1, received a more substantial set of armaments. Two 20mm MG-151s, two Maschinenkanone 103s, and a couple of time-tested Maschinenkanone 108 cannons produce a one-second burst mass of almost 16 kilograms. Even a superfortress will crumble under this kind of assault, and small fighter aircraft are basically a non-issue. By the way, hunting small targets like those became even easier due to the improved handling and the faster fire rate of new guns. Furthermore, the A1A U1 is incredibly effective in head-on engagements and is no slouch in mixed battles either. The AP rounds of the Machine Canona 103 cannons pierce up to 77 millimeters of armor, allowing you to destroy a lot of ground targets through their roofs. Then we have the ME 262 C1A Heimatschütze, which literally means protector of the homeland. That's an apt description for the intended role of this aircraft, but in War Thunder, the Heimatschütze can fight both bombers and fighters. The aircraft is equipped with a rocket engine, allowing for a much higher takeoff speed and faster climb rate, and in level flight, the protector of the homeland can reach a speed of up to a thousand kilometers an hour. Regardless, we suggest that you shouldn't rely on the booster too much and use it sparingly, only when the moment calls for it. After all, you barely have enough fuel for roughly three minutes of uninterrupted use. After that, there was another modification of the Heimatschütze, the ME-262 C2B, equipped with new engines and two rocket boosters. It has an even better climb rate, but due to the limitations of the airframe, isn't much faster in level flight, with a boost of only 20 kilometers an hour. All in all, the C2B plays just like its predecessor, just at a higher BR. The ME-262 series is more than just interceptors, though. German engineers were also interested in making the aircraft viable in ground attack and bomber roles. For instance, there was the ME-262 A1U4 Pulzestürer, that was fitted with a single 50mm cannon instead of the regular quartet of 30mm guns. In mixed battles, one Pulkzerstörer, piloted by an experienced pilot, can clear an entire field of enemy tanks. A 50mm Minengeschoss round can pierce up to 100mm of steel, so even the sturdiest of tanks can't escape unscathed. Furthermore, the Pulkzerstörer isn't useless in air battles either. Even a single hit from its monstrous cannon will definitely cripple any enemy plane. Even if they somehow survive, they won't stay up for long. There was also a ground attack version equipped with bombs. Two of them, in fact. The ME-262 A2A Sturmvogel, or Petrol, could carry two 250-kilogram bombs or a single 500-kilogram one. This version is a pretty good pick for mixed battles. After hitting your targets on the ground, the aircraft can dominate the sky as well. 
Keep in mind, though, that this version is armed with only two 30mm Machine and Kanona 108 cannons, so you have to be very deliberate with every attack. The second bomber variant, known as the ME-262A1 Yabo, retained the familiar quartet of guns. As a field modification of the original aircraft, the Yabo can also carry anti-aircraft rockets. All in all, it has the best of both worlds. The best traits of the original model, as well as the ground attack capabilities of the Sturmvogel. As with any groundbreaking technology of this caliber, the success of the Schwalbe was extensively studied and copied. Right after the end of the war, the USSR developed the Su-9 based on the ME-262. It used the very same German engines, but was fitted with Soviet 37mm and 23mm guns, and modified to carry Soviet bombs of the same weight – two 250kg bombs or a single 500kg one. A bit later, Soviet engineers produced an updated version, the Su-11. But despite its modified airframe and Soviet engines, its German heritage was undeniable. When it comes to gameplay, both aircraft play pretty much the same as the original, but their new, more convenient armaments make it considerably easier to shoot agile enemies in a turn fight. Finally, there was also a Japanese variant of the ME-262. The Nakajima Kika was armed with a couple of 30mm cannons with very limited ammo, and could carry a single 500kg or 800kg bomb. Once again, it plays just like the German Progenitor, but you have to be more aware of your ammo count and fire your cannons in short bursts. Aircraft of the series were a foundational milestone in the history of jet aviation, and War Thunder allows you to test every single one of them in combat. What's your favorite variant of the Schwalbe, by the way? Tell us in the comments below.